Hey everyone, I'm Diana Davison, advocate for the falsely accused and wrongfully convicted. As should be obvious, we are facing a crisis in terms of how the media handles the publication of sexual allegations made against living people. Of course, they're making allegations against dead people as well, but we'll focus on the living for now. We can see with people like Brett Kavanaugh, awaiting approval to the U.S. Supreme Court, this type of allegation can instantly destroy a person's career and reputation and leave a permanent stain on their name even if the person is cleared of the allegations, though most are not given a chance to even defend themselves at all. The prevailing attitude, as expressed on social media, is that the need to address sexual violence in our society is more compelling than the need to protect individuals from defamation. I've noticed a growing trend to justify publication of sexual allegations and assertions of victimhood by claiming the lived experience of the complainant is subjectively true, even if a court of law dismisses their allegations. In other words, a person claiming to be a victim can't be fact-checked, and the allegations are fair comment for the public good. We can certainly see this playing out online, and now even judges are being told they have no access to a proper hearing in a court of law. This claim that anyone who says they're a victim can and should have their allegations published without concern for verification challenges the very foundations and purpose of defamation law. In Canada, Rogers Media has filed a statement of defense in a defamation suit that claims not only they, the mainstream media, have no responsibility to thoroughly research, investigate, fact-check, and scrutinize an article to verify its truth before publication, they claim they have no obligation to provide a reasonable opportunity for the named person to respond. Additionally, Rogers Media has claimed that they have a right to publish claims of harm to a victim, even if the harm is not rational or objective. Now, this particular defamation suit relates to an article published about Canadian comedian and talk show host Mike Bullard. Whether or not you know who Mike Bullard is or care, everyone should be deeply concerned about this brazen claim by Rogers Media because it affects us all and it clarifies what the media has previously denied. Rogers claims that your name can be published in the headline of one of their articles and your reputation could be forever trashed and they don't even need to offer you a chance to comment or respond to the allegations. And they don't need to even attempt to find out if the allegations are true before they publish. Now the obvious first question is, why the hell did Rogers Media just admit that? The next question is, how many other media outlets believe this is true? The public is repeatedly told that allegations published in the media have been investigated before publication. That's why the public takes allegations published by verified journalists so seriously. We're often given anonymous allegations on the assurance that the media have vetted the complainant, or at least tried to make sure the person is rational. Now, Rogers Media claims that their article makes no inference that the person they're quoting is reasonable. In this particular case, the article actually quotes Cynthia Mulligan, saying that she was trying to handle this in a very rational, calm way without overreacting, and fails to tell the reader that a judge did not agree with her. But even if they hadn't published words directly implying Mulligan was rational, Rogers should be aware that the public expects the opinion expressed or quoted in the news to be rational unless the news source tells us otherwise. Of particular concern is that Rogers claims a special sort of protection because their magazine is directed towards Canadian women. This implies that Rogers feels that women, or at least Canadian women, are less concerned with the truth and more concerned with subjective feelings, whether those feelings are rational or not. Now, I don't have a subscription to any Rogers Media publications, so I'm not one of the Canadian women that Rogers Media purports to describe. But courts of law do care about truth and rational or reasonable behavior, 
and the jury in this case will likely give Rogers a chance to find out whether or not some women, as a gender, actually care about facts. This statement of defense basically declares that there should be a new defense against defamation in Canada. The last precedent set by Grant v. Torstar asked for the defense of responsible communications. That allows for the media to be wrong as long as they made sufficient attempts to verify before they published. Rogers has not identified a name for the new proposed defense, but it sounds an awful lot like the histrionic woman defense. I am offended by this proposal, and I hope lawyers take an interest in what this means, both to defamation law and how Rogers seems to feel about women, as if their audience of women has some innate lack of concern about truth or facts. I'll link to the statement of defense below and also put a link to the article in question.